Your bedroom isn't as small as you think. Contrary to popular belief, your bedroom size is not the issue. The scale of your furniture, how many pieces you have in the bedroom, and how tidy or messy you are is the real issue when it comes to the look and feel of your bedroom. Hello everyone, I'm Julie, and in today's video, we are talking about the best ways to maximize your small bedroom layout to make it a more functional and inviting space for you to relax and unwind. We'll be diving into bedroom essentials, different room layouts, and dissecting different case studies so you see all of the creative solutions people are coming up with. And of course, talk about all the fun ways that you can personalize your space, no matter how small that square footage really is. Let's dive right in. What does every bedroom need? Let's first start with the five bedroom essentials that I feel like every single bedroom needs. The first is a bed frame. I know what you might be thinking, your room is already tiny, how are you gonna fit a bed frame in there? But here's why I feel like you have to start with a very essential bed frame. The bed frame encompasses everything that you need for a good night's sleep. You have a soft cushioned headboard, you have a frame that wraps around the entire mattress, you're all tucked in, it's nice and cozy. If your style is a little bit more modern, I love an upholstered bed frame so that you don't need a bed skirt. In order to hide all the contents that are under the bed, a bed skirt is great, but if you have simple metal rails that's acting as your bed frame, that's fine. If you don't have a fully upholstered bed frame, a headboard will suffice. According to the rules of feng shui, you should always have a headboard in place because you need some sort of solid support behind your bed. The solid support can't just be drywall, okay? It needs to be something soft and cushiony. You can even DIY like a fabric headboard or even a piece of of plywood that you wrap in batting and cushion, hang it on the wall and just make it really soft and cushy. Do you tend to spend time in bed even if you're not sleeping or even preparing to sleep? Maybe a day bed is in order. It's really meant for you to relax, lounge, unwind, and even sit propped up for you to do other things in bed other than sleeping. The great thing about implementing a day bed in the space is that you're going to create so much more space for other pieces of essential furniture. The bad thing about having a day bed in space is they're typically really small. It's usually like a twin size or a full size, so you're not gonna be able to sleep two people on the bed unless you like to be like really squished and cramped. If it's only you sleeping in your bedroom, I feel like a twin bed will totally suffice. You can upgrade to a full bed, which gives you a little bit more space. If you have a king size or a cow king bed in the room, congratulations! Your bedroom's not that small, okay? If you could fit a king or a cow king in there, it's actually larger than you think. Now that you have your bed and your bed frame in order, you need a functional surface. A functional surface can be anything from symmetrical nightstands to like a small little side table, maybe even like an accent table. If you're lacking space, you can even mount like a little wall hung shelf right on the wall that's either adjacent to the bed or like next to the bed. The idea here is that you need a surface for you to kind of plop down the essentials that you need at night, right? You have your phone, you might have a book, you might have your journal, maybe reading glasses, maybe chapstick. So think about all those personal bedroom essentials that you need to get a good night's rest or even to wake up on the right side of the bed in the morning. Is your bed located next to a deep window sill or even like a window ledge? If it is, then you could possibly use that space or that niche cutout as your functional surface instead of employing a nightstand. So you always want to think about the conditions in your bedroom and how you can optimize that and maximize it to its full functionality so you can use these architectural features that's inherent in the bedroom for multi-purposes. I live by a feng shui lifestyle. Feng shui loves symmetry in the bedroom. So for me, I always try to install matching symmetrical nightstands in the bedroom as often as I can. Every bedroom needs storage. If you have a closet in space, that's great. The closet could be used for a variety of items, not just for your clothes. It can also become a makeshift desk situation for you if you need a place to work or study. You could also use your closet to hide a television if you watch TV in your bedroom. Remember that closets don't need to be used just for clothes. Imagine having this extra square footage for you to mess around and really get creative with the solutions. Having a closet that's built right into your bedroom is an absolute plus, but it's also not necessary. Necessary. What's necessary is storage. There are so many ways for you to store your clothes and your personal items. You can implement a dresser, a high boy, open shelving. Pretty much you want to take inventory of everything that you have, what your needs are, and then look for a functional storage solution that supports all of those needs. Next, let's talk about lighting. I feel like every room, whether or not it's a bedroom, a common area space, like a living room, dining room, all needs general lighting. General lighting is typically something that lights the entire expanse of the room. If you don't have recessed lighting or general overhead lighting, a simple table lamp or even a floor lamp 
may suffice. If you work in the bedroom or if you have your computer equipment in there, you can also implement a task lamp, like a desk lamp, that will serve its purpose just fine. If you want to get really fancy and layer on all of that yummy lighting in the room, you could also install wall sconces. There are so many rental friendly solutions to add lighting into your space without the need for plugs or hard wiring. I love the idea of using rechargeable LED bulbs. I found so many on Amazon that I love. I'll link for you in the description box below. So don't be afraid if you don't have any plugs nearby or you don't want to hardwire anything, you're a renter. I think a really simple floor lamp or a table lamp that you can plug in should do. And finally, let's talk about window treatments. If you're lucky enough, you might have one window in the bedroom that's going to give you all of that natural daylight in. But what about nighttime? What if you need privacy? What if you have nosy neighbors that are peering through the windows? We do need some sort of window treatment to address the windows for shade, for privacy, for a diffusion of light. So my favorite types of window treatments are ones that are really streamlined and modern. You can go out and buy prefabricated window shades that you can install right over your windows, whether or not they're on the interior side of the casement or exterior on the frame. There are so many types of different window shades that are on the market. You can look for something that's in linen or cotton. If you kind of really love that purest organic vibe, you can also look for a non-woven shade that's really easy to clean and is antimicrobial. If you're looking to add a little bit more texture into your space, I love the look of woven woods or bamboo. It kind of gives you that rustic luxe element that feels very cozy in a small space. If you're looking to jazz up your window treatments and elevate it even further, I love to layer my window treatments. The first line of defense is always sheer panels. Sheer panels is like a gauzy material. It diffuses a lot of natural light. So not only does it cast like a really beautiful glow on the windows, but it also gives you a semi-private solution to window dressing if you don't want to layer on your windows with anything heavier. The second line of defense for window treatments is always blackouts for me. Typical blackout panels have a thermal quality to it. It regulates the temperature that's on the interior side of the bedroom. It also darkens the room so that you can get a better night's sleep. I love blackout panels because clearly I have two young children. They co-sleep with us. But even before then, I just like a really dark and cavernous space when I sleep. So you always want to think about the function of the windows, what you're trying to achieve in the space, and then look for a window treatment that's going to support that specific function. When planning the layout for your small bedroom, consider what furniture pieces are most essential to you. Now for the fun part, let's talk about the best bedroom layouts for you to maximize this small bedroom design. Let's start with a typical 10 by 10 bedroom. 10 feet by 10 feet is roughly three by three meters. In the US, 10 by 10 is a pretty typical size. To me, that's actually even on the smaller side. So if you're watching this video from outside the States, tell me, is three by three meters like a typical size for your bedroom or does that still seem a little large? Next, let's bust out that tape measure, friends. If you want to play designer, you have to have a tape measure. That's like design 101. Okay, if you're working without a tape measure, that's almost like being a chef without a spatula, okay? So don't forget the tape measure. Now I want you to sketch out the shape of your room. Hopefully it's like a cute little square, really easy to work with, but of course we all know that it's not life. Life throws you all these like crazy conditions and you have to work around it. You want to sketch out the shape of the room. You want to denote your door locations, any windows if you have it. It, closets, bathrooms, weird niches cut out. Make sure it's all there before you start planning the room. In the US, it's really typical for builders to build and plan homes with bedrooms side by side. The reason for this is that you can use that shared wall between the two bedrooms to install like a closet. Typical closets are usually like half the size of one wall of a bedroom. So it's a really easy fix for builders to kind of just split that wall in half to use one side of the closet for one bedroom and the opposite side of the closet for the adjacent bedroom. Room. So here is layout one. In layout one, you will see a typical door configuration. You're opening the door and there is just one window in this bedroom. Opposite the window is the closet. So in this situation, you have two walls to work in, which in feng shui is considered the command position. The command position in feng shui denotes where you should place your headboard and your head for the optimum position. The command position simply states that you, as the user, of the bedroom, let's say it's your bedroom, you need to be able to see who is coming in and out of that bedroom. So you have full visibility of the door. That doesn't mean your bed is beside the door. That doesn't mean your feet are aligned with the door. That is considered the coffin position in feng shui. So you definitely want to steer clear of these two negative positions. Now that you understand the command position, there's only two places for you to place your headboard. It would be either against the solid wall, which is the most optimum position because a solid wall denotes stability, support. You're completely supported behind a solid wall 
wall without any openings or crevices. Now on the adjacent wall, you'll see that this is also in a command position, but you are underneath a window. The window is not a solid wall. Clearly it's open. There's energy that's constantly passing through this window. So if your bed is positioned right underneath this window, you're also susceptible to this type of negative energy that's coming in and out of the bedroom. A really easy cure for this would be to install window treatments. These window treatments need to be closed every single night, whether or not it's a shade, it's curtains, it's drapery panels. You wanna close off that window and almost even cut off all of that energy that's gonna permeate the space, especially when you're sleeping. So now that you have your bed situated, it's time to plop in the nightstands. If you're centering your bed on the wall, that's great. You wanna measure the side that's adjacent to your bed so you know the maximum width that you can plop in your nightstands. You can extend your nightstands to the full width of both sides of the bed. You can plop in smaller nightstands so you can add in more storage solutions. For me, I love to maximize the entire width of the space that's next to my bed because nightstands are also a really great way for you to store your books, your clothes, even daily essentials that you need to grab on the go. What if you need a desk in your space? What if you need a dresser? For this layout, I think the best place to put a dresser or a desk would be on the wall that's opposite of your bed. The great thing about this is you could put a television on top of the dresser if you watch TV in your room. That would become your focal point and you're like right in front of the television. This tiny solid wall is also a really great place for your desk. You wanna measure the distance from the foot of the bed to the edge of the wall. Now subtract 24 inches, which is roughly 60 centimeters for a pathway. Obviously you need to be able to walk around your bed. You need to be able to pull your desk chair back. I mean, you need that space so that you can kind of move about the room. After you subtracted that 24 inches or the 60 centimeters, you'll know the depth of space you have left for either a dresser or a desk. Now let's use this exact same bedroom and flip the location of the bed. The great thing about placing the bed on the solid wall is that now the bedroom is actually wider than it is long. You can scoot your bed alongside that wall a little bit to the left so that you have more room on the adjacent side for either a dresser or a desk. Remember that having matching nightstands is ideal, but just having some sort of surface on either side of the bed is really the goal. One side could be a nightstand, the other side could be a dresser, the other side could also be a desk. So you can always swap out one of the nightstands for a more functional work surface depending on what you need in the room. With this layout, you actually even have room to plop in another media console or another really long dresser that you can also use as a vanity station if you need to apply your makeup. So here we have bedroom two. Bedroom two has a lot of the same parameters as bedroom one, but with this bedroom, now you have double doors. These double doors might open up into a balcony, a patio. You might even have an ensuite bathroom in the bedroom that you still need to figure out. In this case, there is only one command position. That command position, as you can see, is underneath the window. The other command position would be on the adjacent wall, but of course, in this case, you have these double doors. Now there's nowhere else for you to put your bed, but underneath the window. So let's plop in this bed. Let's put in our symmetrical nightstands. Let's subtract the pathway 24 inches minimum. I mean, you have a little bit more space to mess with. That's great. You can go all the way up to 30 inches, which is roughly around like 80 centimeters. So between 60 and 80 centimeters is really ideal for that space that you need in front of the closet so that you can access it. You've got your bed in here, you have your nightstands. Now let's put this dresser or a different type of case good opposite the foot of the bed. And here you've created the ultimate bedroom layout. You have all your essentials in place. You might even have room for a little corner chair that becomes a catch all for all your clothes. Or if you're lacking general lighting, you can also plop in a floor lamp in the corner of the space. Now that you see all of the different configurations that you could lay out for your small teeny tiny bedroom, does it feel so small? Do you have a better understanding of scale and proportion when it comes to measuring your furniture? We'll be ending this video with two different case studies. I really wanted to find like amazing examples of teeny tiny bedrooms and all of the creative solutions that designers and homeowners came up with. This first case study is from a teeny tiny bedroom in New York City. So you know they're working with like tiny spaces over there. You can see that the before was just like a blank white box. There's just no personality and it lacks a lot of functionality as well. 
I think when you first look at this space, you might think, oh my gosh, that bed is so massive. But that is a bedroom essential, okay? It's up to you to try to figure out what are some of your must-haves? What are the things that you won't compromise on? She needed the biggest bed that she could fit in this room, but I'll show you all of the clever ways for her to resolve everything that's happening around the bed. If you've always wanted to create more of a dramatic statement in the bedroom, you could do it with a canopy. I love this DIY canopy. I mean, she literally just installed drapery raw on the ceiling and the adjacent walls. She hung really beautiful patterned polka dot drapery. This adds style, it adds functionality, and it adds that drama that everyone craves in a bedroom. In this situation, you'll see that the bed is kind of like in this tiny little corner, right? I think a fully upholstered bed frame or even like a bulky headboard would have added so much more heaviness to an already small bedroom. Let's move on to the functional surface. Remember what I said about that windowsill? You could use it as like a tiny little ledge for all of your personal belongings so that she plopped in like a candle, a watch, and even a cute little decorative item. The designer used a vintage corbel in this case and she had spray painted it black so that it matches the rest of the room. Let's talk about these windows. I'm someone who doesn't like peel and stick, you guys do know, but in this case, she used this peel and stick wallpaper in such a creative way. She cut out a really cute shape that frames the window. It's not a whole lot of look, but it feels so personal to the user, which I love. If you look closely, these custom Roman blinds are in the same solid silk fabric she used for the outside of the canopy. And finally, let's talk about this really genius seating area. It's just a simple chair that's kind of plopped in the corner of the room. This chair can serve so many purposes. You can use a chair to stack up books or magazines that you read on the daily. You can use this chair as a catch-all, especially when you're trying to get dressed and like you need to get out in a hurry. Your guests can sit in the chair, you can sit on the bed, and then boom, all of a sudden you've created a conversational seating area right in your teeny tiny bedroom. I also love all of the finishing touches that she implemented in the space. She played with adding like tassels and fringe to a really basic drum shade that's installed on the ceiling. She added in like a really cute half moon console. I love rounded consoles because they don't take up a whole lot of space. You don't bump yourself into like sharp corners and it just makes the space feel like really soft and sexy. What did you think of this eclectic design? Are there any creative solutions that you can steal for your own small bedroom? This next case study comes from a small bedroom in Ontario, and I love how this design almost has like a very SoCal casual coolness to it. The before bedroom isn't that bad at all. I mean, it looks really small because in this case, the owners couldn't put the bed in a command position. It, had she not put it on the adjacent wall, you could easily use a solid wall to place the focal point, which is the bed. So she actually even mocked up like a mood board, which I love. The inspiration is like outdoors, nature's fine, right? You've got a lot of organic materials. I love how the homeowner really thought about creating like a wow statement in this space. She DIY'd almost like a board and batten type of focal wall behind the bed. She did this by installing really simple strips of like wood that she then nailed to the wall and then painted in like a really beautiful pheromone ball off-white color. Then she plopped in her lighter color bed, lighter bed sheets, a really cute nightstand that actually matches the bed. You remember what I say on this channel, like no matchy matchy. I hate matching bedroom sets. But in a situation like this, it really works because there's so many other elements in the space. So the nightstands and the bed almost act as one unit. She has her task lighting in there, like a really simple wall sconce that's attached right to the wall. This move not only lights the surface of the nightstand, but if you place a light fixture on dimmers, it's also gonna give you maximum control control of the lighting at all times of the day. Remember to never neglect the lighting in the space. You might not need general lighting, but I think some sort of task lighting, whether or not they're beside your table, is going to give you all of those light effects to make your small bedroom appear even larger than it is. And finally, let's talk about the piece de resistance in this room. It is the custom drapery panels. I love this system in this room. As I said, my favorite types of window treatments are ones that are layered. You have the soft gauzy shears, you have these really beautiful heavier curtains are kind of layered on the outside of the shears. This creates a really beautiful focal point in the room. It allows you to draw the curtains back and make the room feel even bigger and brighter when it's just sheer panels. 
And then at night, when you close the curtains, it's gonna give you that cavernous effect that you absolutely desire in a restful place. So now you see two totally different teeny tiny bedrooms, two totally different styles. Between the eclectic bedroom and the casual bedroom, which one do you think speaks to your style more? That's it for today's video, everyone. I hope you got some really great ideas on how you can maximize your bedroom layout, no matter how small it is. If you like this type of content, you want more small space ideas, please give this video a like and a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know, what's the one thing that you can do in your bedroom right now that would make a huge impact in your space? Share this video with anyone you know who's struggling with their small bedroom design and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop on the channel every single Thursday. Don't forget to watch this video that I'm gonna link right here. It is eight clever ways for you to maximize your small living room layout. Now that you know how to plan your dream bedroom, let's move along to the rest of the house. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.